I want to share two stories with you. In 1986, my wife, Joe Carroll, and I were living in Vienna, where I was serving as U.S. ambassador to Austria. The Museum of Modern Art had loaned some treasured paintings to the Belvedere Museum for a special show. At the dinner for the opening, Zuben Mater, who was in Vienna with the Israeli Philharmonic Orchestra, sat next to Joe Carroll. Here was one of the international maestros, born in Barn Bay. But he started speaking to Joe Carroll in Yiddish. She thought he was an Indian Jew. So she invited Zuba Mehta to her home for Passover shortly after. Although he wasn't actually Jewish, we clearly saw that Zuba Mehta had a Jewish soul. And we have cherished this friendship ever since. Here's one more story, and this is very important. In 1991, during the first Gulf War, when Scud missiles were raining down in Israel, Zuba Mehta canceled long-term commitments around the world to fly into the war zone to show his support for the Jewish state. When it was suggested that no one should fly into Israel, he flew into the war zone. When Zuba was asked, why he did this, he, he replied that he couldn't imagine not doing it. This is the measure of, this, of the man who received the Teddy Kalik Award for the advancement of Jewish culture. The Israeli Philharmonic has thrilled and moved audience around the world. It has been one of Israel's greatest ambassadors and having Zubin Mehta, born in India, as a point man for the Philharmonic, has sent an important message to people everywhere. Zubin, we can never thank you enough. Before Zubin formally accepts this award, let us all enjoy the finale of the stunning last concert that Zubin made to conduct with the Israeli Philharmonic, Mahler's Resurrection.
evening, everybody. I cannot tell you what an honor it is to be receiving an award from the World Jewish Congress, particularly in the name of Teddy Kolek. My friendship with Teddy Kolek started even before the Six Day War. He used to come to every concert of the Israel Philharmonic in Jerusalem and sit in the wings and fall asleep after half an hour. But he came to every one of them. Then we would go to an Arab restaurant in East Jerusalem to have dinner. He was very liked by the Arab population of East Jerusalem. In fact, I would like to tell you that a year after the Six Day War, he arranged a concert for me and the orchestra in Bethlehem with the consent of the mayor of Bethlehem. And we did the Requiem of Verdi on the major square in front of the Church of the Nativity. And it was the first time that Jews, Arabs, and Christians sat together for any event. It was a very moving occasion. And Teddy was the one with the mayor of Jerusalem who organized the whole event. Just before I went on stage, he said to me, you know, Zubin, we have just learned of a new organization that has started amongst the Arabs, and it's called Fatah. That was a predecessor of the Palestinian liberal organization. So if they start any kind of terrorism during the concert, don't run away, because if the public sees you running away, there'll be a chaos. I went to stage saying to myself, Vase Mir. But nothing happened. The concert was a huge success. And some of the, the soloists we had were Shirley Verrett, great American mezzo-soprano, and Richard Tucker also. And every time I met Richard later on, all he talked about was that concert that Teddy arranged. I arrived in Jerusalem on the fourth day of the Six Day War with a friend of mine of the Israeli army, Memi de Shalit. I went to the King David Hotel. I think I was the only occupant there since because of the war, everything was closed. The next morning, I went to Teddy's office and lo and behold, I found there, sitting in front of him, David Ben-Gurion. And of course, I immediately started to leave, thinking I'm intruding their meeting. And they said, no, no, we are just kibitzing here. Please come be with us. Ben-Gurion started then, after what we spoke about, what's going on in the war. He knew a lot about Oriental religions. And he started to tell me about my Zoroastrian faith. I was surprised how much he knew about it. In the middle of this meeting, Teddy's secretary comes running and says, Jerusalem is in our hands now. And Ben-Gurion got up and said about the wall, that this we will never give up again. After that, we started talking about giving a victory concert. Jerusalem was occupied by General Narkis, whose daughter later on and still is a member of the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. The next morning, I went into East Jerusalem and the soldier at the Mandelbaum Gate told me I was the first civilian to cross over. I went with my friend, Mimi de Shalit, to a hotel where General Herzog 
was having breakfast in East Jerusalem. Later on, as you know, he was president of Israel. Teddy and I go back so many years. And the last time I saw him was when he was living in an old people's home in Jerusalem. And I knew <laughs> when I hugged him, it was the last time I would see him. My friends, you can imagine what an honor it is for me to get the Teddy Colic Award. Bemet todarabah.